Today, we're gonna add some USB ports to the seating area in our Cobalt 292. We've done a lot of work on this Cobalt since we've owned it, just like every boat I've purchased over the years. We wanna make it our own, do a bunch of upgrades and things, and make it more usable for what we need on an everyday basis whenever we get a chance to go out on the water. So today, what I'm gonna do is add some USB ports to the back seating area so that people that have their devices, phones, whatever, musical devices, whatever it might be, can plug into a USB port without having to come up and use the one in the glove box or by the driver in the helm area. Now previously, I did add USB ports to the helm area right next to the steering wheel and I did add a pair of them up in the glove box area, but what I noticed the last few times we've been out is that anytime somebody needs to charge something, which happens more often than I thought would, uh, they come up and plug it in and there's multiple devices sitting in the glove box or on top over there. Instead of having that mess, what I want to do is put a uh, pair of USB ports for charging, the quick charge version, down uh, in the back area so that people can use them back there as well. Now what I'm going to be using is this quick charge it's a quick charge 3.0 uh, pair of USB ports and in the middle I don't know if you can see it in the video there's some digits and that's going to be a voltage readout uh, so it tells you in addition to being a charging port uh, it also tells you what the voltage is of the batteries that this is running off of um, so the house batteries in this case uh, it also comes with an extra fuse if you need uh, put that in a safe place it already has a fuse inside it uh, and it comes with a hole saw of the correct size so that you can drill the hole uh, for this shank to go through and then that's the retaining nut that goes on the back and then it's got uh, a couple of wires as well so that you can connect this to your power source and plug right in to the spade connectors on the back of this guy. The other things I've got here are a butane torch terminal crimpers, and some heat shrink butt connectors. I love these. They're not just normal butt connectors. You crimp them on and then you put the heat on it from a torch or a heat gun and they shrink down real nice and tight around the wire so that you have a really good secure connection. And then I've got my drill so that we can uh, put the hole where we need to along with the hole saw here. Before I get started, if you like this sort of content, make sure to like, hit the subscribe button below, and if you want to be notified as new videos are uploaded, hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button as well. And if it's your first time watching, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoy this content. Let me show you what the seating area in the back looks like. So we've got this L-shaped seating area, and then we've got more seating up front, obviously. This is the kitchenette area, sink, uh, bar top, and some cup holders. I could put it here, but then whoever's charging there would have to lay their phone out right there. And in the hot sun, it's just going to bake your electronic device. It's going to get really hot. Probably not the greatest idea. I think the only realistic place to put the charging ports is in that cubby right there. There's two cup holders. Let me see. Right there and right there. And then there's the speaker as well. Um, I'm thinking probably right in this area is going to be the best spot and then we'll have easy access to run the wire into the back and then my positive and negative bus bars for the 12 volt power are going to be right here or actually right about here in the engine bay. So this, this entire thing lifts up. This is the engine lid right here at this whole assembly. The whole thing lifts up. I can go down there, route the wire real easily to there and then connect to our positive and negative bus bars for the house batteries. First thing I'm gonna do is lift up the engine compartment cover, the bilge cover, and I'm gonna peek back there and make sure there's nothing behind there that would get in the way. I don't think there is. I've been back there plenty of times, run wiring for the speakers, a bunch of the GPS stuff in the front, the amplifiers, everything that are in the front. Um, I've got a separate set of bus bars that sit up there in the front for the amplifiers and things. So I've, I've run plenty of wiring back there. I don't remember there being anything that's gonna get in the way, but I'm gonna double check make sure that there's not anything back there that's going to uh, get in the way of that uh, charging plug sticking out maybe an inch and a half or so and as long as everything looks good next thing i'm going to do is use the hole saw to put the hole there and then we'll work on running the wires so i took a peek back there there's a bunch of wires and things that i've obviously run over time 
um, for the various things that have to go from the back to the front of the vote, but there's nothing back there that's going to cause an issue with uh, that charging plug sticking in about an inch and a half or so. Um, so let's see here. What's a good spot? I think right around here is going to be good. I don't want it too low, even though that's a waterproof uh, charger with a cap on it. It's weatherproof. Um, occasionally when the boat does get pretty dirty, I do come in here with the hose and rinse everything out. And I don't want it to be down below facing upwards because it's going to have water pooling up and puddling up on there. And there's more of a chance that uh, it might get into the USB ports. So I want it facing uh, this way on a vertical surface. And I think right around here is going to be good. Maybe you know what, maybe even further over? I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm gonna decide here as I go, but let me know in the comments below here in the next few seconds, what do you guys think, further this way or over here hidden in the corner? Hmm. All right, that's the spot I chose. I was thinking about either here or out here. I went with something sort of in between. It's hidden up enough in there to where if you're just walking around the boat, it's not gonna be super obvious, but it's still easily accessible and not too far in the corner. And then this way, you'll be able to plug your phone in, leave it here, have it under the shade, and still, you know, keep it from the heat from the sun and everything. So next thing I'm going to do is run the wires from my bus bars, which are right here and right here. I need to clean up some of those wires from a light install I just did. I'm going to get them connected to the two bus bars and route them alongside these wires and up through there and into the access hole that's right there and then over to this area. So I'm going to run the wires first so I can grab them through this hole, uh, pull them through, and then once they're through I'm going to go ahead and put the ends, uh, the spade connectors on there and everything, push it through, and then finally once that's all done the wires are connected then we'll work on getting the actual um, USB charger, port thingamajigger, uh, mount it in there and put the little nut on the back of it. Now I need access to the back of this hole and it's way too far on this end to get to it from the bilge and the engine compartment. Uh, easiest way is for me to remove the speaker and reach in there with my hand. So I'm gonna remove the four bolts or the four screws holding this on and that'll give me access to the back of that, not only to grab the wires and pull them through from the engine compartment from the bus bars, but then also for the nut that uh, holds this entire thing in place once we're ready to, to mount it. Got everything wired up here to my bus bars. Got the speaker put back and there it is. We've got our voltage readout, you flip it open, and you've got your two quick charge USB ports. And now people can charge their phones in the back of the boat. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out the other content on the channel. If you're into boats, there's lots of good content on upgrades and maintenance. And uh, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button, and it'll help us continue growing. In the meantime, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.